Welcome to part seven of our workshop. So this is where the fun begins. Uh, so we're actually now gonna do the work of taking our tokens, figuring out what it all means and beginning to output the actual binary. That will be the actual executable that we can then run either on our CPU or in our emulator like I have here. So we're gonna write a new function that's gonna match the parsed instruction with the proper action. And so if you remember, at the end of our assemble function, we had this process function. And that's the function we're going to write now. We're going to write this process function. So we're going to say process takes in set of tokens. Oops, set of tokens. It also needs access to our output. It also needs access to our input. So the first thing that we want to make sure that we remember to do is we need one special case. And that special case is if we have a blank line or a label by itself, right? Because in that case, there would not be any instruction that we parsed. And so we want to make sure that we don't try to parse an instruction that isn't there. So we can say if um, tokens.instruction dot empty. So, so we had mentioned that strings can have a property called empty. We actually use that all the way back in the beginning with our find split method. We were able to check that there was nothing after the dot ASM of our input file by checking the empty property of our split to string. And we can do exactly the same thing here. So if our instruction is empty, meaning we did not parse an instruction, and it's also the case that just for sanity, we're going to make sure that we don't have a first argument and we don't have a second argument. That's probably a little bit of overkill, just the way that our parser works, but doesn't hurt to check it anyway. So if we have just empty instructions and arguments, we then need to check to see if we are in the first pass. Because if we are in the first pass, and we happen to have a label on this line, then we still need to do the work of adding that symbol to our symbol table. So we need to make sure that it's not the case that we have an empty label. If we do not have an empty label, we're gonna to need to add the symbol. But if our output passes two or we don't have a label, then there's nothing for us to do and we can simply now return. So that takes care of our one special case. Now, the remainder of what we have to do is look at what instruction we have. We need to then process that. And then we need to find the correct function that will output the correct code for that instruction that we have found. We haven't written any of those yet, but we will. Um, but for now, we're gonna say match op opcode to helper function. And so again, this is gonna be one of those perhaps most difficult of pieces of our actual assembler, but it's gonna show a really useful and I think nice feature of D that's gonna save us an unbelievable amount of typing. So if you remember in our tokens object, we have this array of strings here. That's all the different instructions that we found in this table. It's actually not quite all of the valid instructions. It's actually missing a couple. It's missing in and out. And the reason that it's missing in and out is because unfortunately for us, in and out are both instructions that are reserved words in D. And that would actually mess up the part of the code that we're gonna do, but it's pretty easy to just work around that one little problem. Not really even much of a problem. And easy, like I said, easy for us to work around. So we're gonna write a switch statement, and that switch statement is going to be um, tokens.instruction. So much nicer than C. You can just run a switch on a string. You can set equalities on strings. You don't need any fancy functions. It's built into the language, which is so much nicer than having to like process each individual character. All right, so what we're gonna do now that we have our switch statement 
is we're going to say static for each, which is going to do the very same work as a for each loop, but it's going to do it at compile time. And so what this is going to do for us is it's actually going to end up creating an entire laundry list of case statements for all of the different instructions that we have up here in our array of strings. So we don't have to write, you know, case not, case LXI, case stacks, case, that would take forever. D can actually write that code for us at compile time. And we're gonna take advantage of exactly that feature. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say case instruction, All right? So for each instruction in our list of instructions, each instruction will get its own case and will fill in, you know, it'll replace the word instruction here with whatever that instruction happens to be, right? Whether it's NOP, LXI, et cetera, et cetera. Then we're also going to use this function in D called mixins. Um, and so if I go search in the D documentation for mixins. Um, does it actually come up with that? Let me check the actual D itself. Mixin. There we go, string mixins. So it says string mixins enable string constants to be compiled as regular D code and inserted into the program. That's neat. Um, there are also template mixins as well, which will take an arbitrary set of declarations from the body of a template declaration and insert them into the current context. So this mixin is actually really quite powerful and we can use it to effectively write the logic for each case statement so that we only have to write it once and the combination of our mixin, our string mixin, with our static for each will cause D to write out all of the cases and all of the logic that those cases will execute one shot, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so we can say mix in instruction and then we'll say tokens output. So what all this is going to do is during compile time, it's going to iterate over the, the list of all those instructions in that array. And then for each one of those strings, it will create a case with that string name. And the logic will be the string name itself, which will actually be the name of a function to be called. And then it will have the arguments like we did before, tokens, comma, output. So instead of writing however many of these case statements there are, the D language will write it for us with the combination of mixin and static for each. And the last thing we have to do is just put a break um, and you can have it break back to um, the label we made, which was match. And I think that's really, really cool. Uh, but like we said, there are some things we need to watch out for, right? We're not quite done, right? So we did say that there is the out and in that we had to worry about. So let's go ahead and worry about the out and in. So we can't just say out as the name of the function, which is why we can't have it in our mixin, because out is already a reserved word and it'll cause compile errors. So I'm just going to name it i80 underscore out. You can name it anything, but I'm just going to name it i80 out. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for in. And I'll also just name it i80 in. And there's actually one more case that we have to worry about. There is also an end pseudo instruction, which while doesn't have a name that's a reserved word, um, actually requires three arguments. It also requires an input argument. And we'll see that kind of towards the end of the workshop when we're done with everything. And the last thing we need to do is have a default case. So if we didn't match any of our instructions, um, then we're just gonna throw a new exception because we've hit an error. We're going to say it's an unknown instruction. And we'll just spit back to the user whatever that instruction happens to be. And that's it. That is the entirety of our process function. Not all that many lines of code, but I'm going to say the same thing again, as we've been saying for the last couple of episodes. Make sure that you really understand what's going on with this process function. Right? We have that one special case 
if we just have a blank line or we just have a label by itself, if we have the label by itself, we need to register it in our symbol table. Otherwise, we have no other work to do. And then make sure you really do follow and understand what's going on here with this matching function, what's really going on with these mixins with this static for each, right? So at compile time, we're reading over that array of strings, which we have right here. And for each one of those strings, it's gonna have its own case, right? Instruction will just be replaced by the name of the actual instruction, NOP, LXI, so on and so forth. And then it's gonna generate the logic. And the logic for every single one of our instructions is gonna to be to call a new function. And the new function it's calling is gonna also have the name of that instruction. And so mix in instruction is going to write out that function. And then it'll take two arguments, token output. And then we had our three exceptions, right? Because out and in are both preserved words. So we'd break, would break um, the logic here. And then end is just a special case where it also takes input. And we'll see why kind of towards the end of all of this. All right, and with that, I will go ahead and save our work at process function. And I will see you all in the next episode.